Commonwealth Department of Health uh, COVID-19 update for today, September the 3rd. Uh, my name is Alison McMillan and I'm the Commonwealth Chief Nursing and Midwifery Officer. So today I can report that we've seen 127 cases reported in the last 24 hours. That brings us now to more than 26,000. It's actually 26,027 in Australia since the commencement of the pandemic. We see 12 new cases in New South Wales. Three of those are overseas acquired, seven locally acquired where their contact is confirmed, and two locally acquired where the contact has not yet been identified. Victoria has reported 113 new cases, 43 of those locally acquired, and 70 currently under investigation. Queensland has two new cases, both of those under investigation. Sadly, we have seen 15 further death, deaths reported in the last 24 hours, all of those in Victoria, and sadly, that brings us to 678 deaths in Australia since the commencement of the pandemic. We have uh, 391 people in hospital currently diagnosed with COVID-19, and 26 of those are being cared for in our intensive care units across the country. We've seen now more than 6 million tests um, nationally since the commencement of the pandemic. And again, it's important for me to remind everyone that if you have any symptoms at all, however minor, please do stay at home and get tested. It's important probably for me to remind everyone also, if in case you didn't know, that it's um, Father's Day this Sunday. And again, this year, like every other, is going to mean that for all of these important milestones we see each year, we're going to have to do this a little differently. It's important you follow the current restrictions that exist within the state and territory where you live. But um, remember also, these are the times when we need to protect the most vulnerable. So if your father lives with you within your household, then a hug is okay. But other than that, you're going to need to find new and different ways to greet each other and greet those you love, particularly all the fathers out there to whom we are so grateful for the great love and care they provide to all of us. So a reminder, follow those rules and restrictions that exist in your state and territory and think of new ways to show your love for your dad um, in this continuously challenging year of 2020. So I'm happy to go with questions and I think, Dana, you have my first question. Oh, thank you. Um, I've actually got two questions. The first one's about healthcare worker infections in Victoria, which are remaining quite high. Um, this has raised concerns about the total numbers of going to plateau and to labour state to pass out of lockdown. Um, is the AHPDC's infection control expert group looking at ways to further improve infection control, such as by the use of respirator masks and Thank you, Donna. Yes, yes, the infection control expert group that provides advice to HPPC, we continue to monitor um, healthcare uh, worker infections. And of course, we are very concerned about any infections with our frontline workers, uh, wherever they are. We continue to review all of the evidence um, around the world, and we continue to work with frontline workers so that we can understand some of the challenges they've faced. As we know, uh, healthcare workers do put themselves at the front line, um, and for that we are internally grateful. The numbers are flattening, Dana, and we would expect to see some numbers continue given how many we saw. Uh, we know that sometimes it can take up to 14 days to see um, someone develop symptoms, and so we'll continue to monitor this. But again, I, on behalf of uh, the, the health department in the Commonwealth, but on, on behalf of all health professionals, are internally grateful for the amazing work that our health professionals do out there every day, um, putting themselves at risk um, to save others. Thanks, Dana. You have a second question? Uh, yeah, thank you. The other one is just about the aged care death figures that are now being reported through the Victorian Aged Care Response Centre. Now, those are being based on Victorian uh, numbers, but it seems that there's a, some sort of a delay in, in the numbers being um, uploaded, which resulted in an incorrect um, figures being given in question time earlier this week. I'm just wondering um, what's causing that, that glitch given that the new system was supposed to improve the accuracy of, of this reporting that you did them. 
Yes, Donna, I think I can say that the, uh, everyone's working extraordinarily hard to uh, improve the accuracy of this data. We are working both at the Commonwealth and the state level. As I'm sure you can appreciate, uh, this is a complex issue of identifying um, people uh, across the system and making sure that the two um, numbers of figures do reconcile. I think we're a lot closer to getting a complete reconciliation, but it's going to just take a little longer to complete that process. But I can assure you, Donna, there is no intent to be anything other than completely transparent with these figures. And we are all committed to doing that and uh, we'll continue to work hard together so that we can make the system very clear. Tamsin, you've got a question for me? Hi, yes, thanks for taking my call. I've had two questions as well, if that's all right. Um, sure. Just following on from Dana's question about the data, I was just wondering if you'd be able to speak to the importance of reconciling this data and, and if you had any idea when that process would be completed? Tasman, the two um, data sets are being worked through. I, I can't give you a deadline when that will um, completely resolve. We had to go back some significant time, as you can appreciate. And the I, people, sadly, do pass away in a whole range of places, and therefore being able to uh, make sure that we collect every single piece of information does take time. And ultimately, the, uh, the fine arbiter of of the cause of death, and obviously every death is a tragedy, is that of the coroner. So th these, um, these final figures ultimately will be the determination of the coroner, and that often does take some extended time. But uh, again, we are committed to ensuring that we have consistent data because it's important for us in understanding the impact of this um, pandemic on, on such a vulnerable population. You got the second question, Tasman? Yeah, thank you. Um, well, obviously I don't mind wouldn't expect you to comment on what will be discussed at National Cabinet tomorrow. I was just wondering if, uh, from a health perspective, if there's a safe way um, to move farmers between um, areas of no COVID cases if there was to cross a border. Yes, Thompson, I think um, it's fair to say that we've all seen some challenges across the country um, in the movement of agricultural workers across state borders. We know the importance of agriculture both to um, in our, our national priorities and for our, for our economy. Certainly, uh, my understanding is the Department of Agriculture has been working extremely hard to come up with some um, processes and systems that will make it as, um, as simple but as safe as possible um, in this movement of people across borders. Um, but that is a matter for National Cabinet, so I'm not in a position to be able to comment other than to say a HPPC has been consulted on the health aspects of that. Thanks, Tasman. And Kate. Katie, Thank sorry, you very Katie. Much. That's right. Um, the West Australian Premier said he won't agree to a hotspot strategy because it's less effective um, than a hard border closure. Is this the case? Uh, are hotspots more risky than blanket border closures? Thanks, Katie. I think. Um, it's fair to say Dr. Coatsworth dealt quite significantly with the definitions of hotspots yesterday. Um, obviously, the um, the priority about hotspots is, and its use is really about what are you intending to use it for, uh, and therefore the definition is important. And so, you know, definition of hotspots can be relative to a local response. Obviously, there's no cases in Western Australia at the moment, and so that's not relevant. Um, it may be the determination of the what's allowed to move across a particular border, as we know Western Australia has their, a hard border closure at this point in time, um, or it may reflect how a national response is done. So. I know again that um, the determination and discussion around hotspots is going to be done at National Cabinet tomorrow, so I'm going to leave it to um, the, the Premiers and, uh, and others to, to make the final, final comment on that. It's not for me to comment at this point in time. Okay. Just quickly, um, on, on agricultural workers as well, um, are there specific medical concerns that have been raised regarding getting ag workers to um, rural and regional areas? Um, there, again, it, it's, it's more a, a point of the, for the Department of Agriculture to deal this rather than a health issue, Katie, so I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you.